What is up, everybody? Brian Mendler back in your life with this special edition of the podcast, doing a bunch of stuff on COVID-19 and talking about the impact and the effect that it's having on people. And tonight, today, I'm super excited to be joined by my good friend, Vicki Wilson from Wyandotte, Michigan. It's good to see you, Vicki. How are you? Good, Brian. How are you doing? It's good to see you, too. I'm doing great. So I'm curious to know it's Friday night of the end of the first week. And what has this week been like for you? I mean, tell everybody kind of who you are and what's this week been like for you? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Vicki and I am a principal, an elementary principal in Wyandotte, Michigan. And this week, I would have to say since last Friday, the best word I can think of was surreal. It was the word I kept using a week ago on Friday when we were preparing to shut down schools. Um, every, every day is a little bit different. The information we're getting every day, almost every hour, seems like it's different between watching the news and getting updates from the district. We don't know what tomorrow will be like. At this point, we know that our governor has called for schools to be closed through April 5th. Our district was scheduled to be on break that week of April 5th. So we have um, extended that till April 13th. However, April 13th isn't looking so good lately. So I don't, I don't know what it'll be like in the future. Why isn't April 13th looking good? That's disappointing to hear. Um, that's an opinion. I just, I guess, you know, just looking at how the numbers are going up in the state. Um, a few days ago, we had 45 cases. Um, then it went to 100 to 200. Today we were over 500. So it's mm -hmm. like each day it's doubling, um, and we're we're increasing at that rate, which yeah, it's scary. It's not flattening the curve. Our, our, you know, we're we're doing this to flatten the curve, and um, we're seeing the growth happening by doubling each day. Yeah, it's scary. And, and, you know, every single day I like you, my my opinion changes on this. I, you know, even last night I recorded a couple of podcasts and I said very clearly my opinions changing every day. But, you know, I I don't know what's going on and exactly what to do. And I think the uncertainty of everything is is really a struggle for so many people. Take me back to last Friday. So last Friday, yeah. when when were things last normal for you and, and when did they start to change? Okay, I knew you were going to ask that, so I spent some time thinking about timelines. So I would say early March, the first week of March is when we started hearing a little bit from our soup about COVID-19. and I'm, I'm losing you. You're going in and out. Are you hardwired? About COVID-19 and the precautions that we needed to take. So at that time, I knew this would happen. Yeah, you're going in Are and you out. There. Nope. No good. No, I had to leave Hardwire to get uh, onto this. Oh, you left Hardwire. Better computer here. Uh, no. All right, I'm I'm leaving. Okay. So wait a minute. So can you is there can you hardwire Shoot. your? Oh. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna pause this. No, I can't hardwire my... This conference will now be recorded. What is up, everybody? Brian Mendler back in your life on this special edition of the podcast, COVID edition, coming to you tonight. And uh, sorry, I screwed that. <laughs> <laughs> this may take all night. This conference will now be recorded. What is up, everybody? Brian Mendler back in your life on this special edition of the podcast, talking everything about COVID-19. And today I'm talking with my good friend, Vicki Wilson, joining me from Michigan. Where exactly are you in Michigan? We are in Wyandotte, Michigan, which is about 15 minutes south of Detroit. So Vicki is an elementary school principal and one of my favorite principals. And so <laughs> I wanted to just kind of touch base with you and talk to you about what the last couple of weeks have been like and, and get your thoughts on the, just everything that, mm -hmm. that that's going on. Um, so 
I I'm curious to know it's it's Friday night. It's the end of kind of the first week of online learning. How did this week go for you? What was this week like? I feel like Brian, things are changing day by day, minute by minute this week. So um, I'm going to take you back. So early March, we started hearing a little bit from our superintendent on precautions for coronavirus, things to do at school. And those were like universal precautions. Make sure the kids are washing their hands frequently. Talk to kids about not touching their face. Um, those sort of things. So we started to implement some of those measures early March. Um, one of the things one of the things that we were doing is making sure that the kids were washing their hands before lunch, um, which was a little problematic because they have recess before lunch and then trying to get 400 sets of hands washed really quickly before they go into the cafeteria was a little bit of a logistic nightmare. So then we brought in um, hand sanitizers right into the cafeteria and started doing that. So that went in on for about a week and we didn't hear too much about it after that. Uh, letters went home to families, letting them know what we're doing for disinfecting of the school. Um, we were on a protocol of a spray disinfectant that we're using regularly, got a four day schedule through our schools. Um, and things I would say got pretty real the week before this past week, March 11th, um, we had the governor of Michigan declared a state of emergency at that point, and we shared that with parents. At that point, some parents were keeping their kids home from school, but we hadn't closed schools yet. We were upping the frequency of washing hands again, disinfecting in the cafeteria. We weren't holding absences against families or parents and just kind of giving parents a heads up that we're going to follow CDC guidelines at this point, uh, Michigan Department of Education guidelines. And from there, things went really fast. The next day, we had an admin meeting on March 12th. And at that meeting, we talked about what would we do if we closed. Um, at that point, we canceled all large gatherings. So if we had anything going on in our school that that was over 100 people, that was canceled. So we had a couple upcoming music concerts, those were canceled. That very day we had parent-teacher conferences, so I immediately sent an email home just saying that parents um, will be called by the child's teacher at their scheduled time that day, but we weren't bringing people into the school. Um, by 11 o'clock that night, the governor declared that all schools in the state of Michigan would be closing as of Monday. So I feel like we just, we'd been talking about it, what are we gonna do? But it just hit like a ton of bricks at 11 o'clock that night. And I just felt like I was blindsided. So we went into school on the 13th, Friday, a week ago today. And that day was, the most surreal day I've ever gone to at school. I, like, I literally remember driving into work that day and it was, there'd been a full moon that week and it was gray, like it was very mystical the whole drive in. And I left really early cause I was expecting a really crazy day and just driving in and thinking like, how do I lead through this? How do I, this is not in the guidebook. I don't know how to be a principal through this and we're gonna have to figure it out. That day it was, it was something that I was not prepared for. I did send a text to all of my teachers, all my staff early that morning and letting them know if they hadn't heard it on the news um, that schools were going to be closing at the end of that day today. We wouldn't be allowed back into the building after seven o'clock that night for the entire closure. Um, and that all I could say was I would have to make some really fast, quick decisions throughout the day and please be patient and bear with me because it's going to be hard. So take me through that, that day. So, okay. I I'm shocked by this. So, so once you're out at seven o'clock that night, you don't get to go back in until the closure is over. Is that exact? Is that what you said? That, yes, that is what our district decided to do, um, and the reason for that is the our maintenance department has spent, or they spent Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
doing full disinfectant cleaning and they don't want any human presence in the building. It's closed to all, all germs, all human presence. So what is that Friday like? So you're driving to work. Take me step by step through that day, the last day. <laughs> all right. Um, driving to work, it felt just uneasy. I prayed all the way to work. Like, you know, please give me the strength to lead through this. Please give me the strength to make the right decisions, to see all the floating pieces that I need to see while making these decisions. Um, because I knew the decisions weren't going to be the kind that I usually do where I get input and what do you think and gather a team. These are going to be level one, make a quick decision and stick with it. Um, so I was just thinking about that all the way there. Let me see all the perspectives quickly. Let me make some quick decisions that seem right at the moment. Um, it honestly wasn't as crazy as I thought it was going to be. I thought I'd have a lot of people coming at me, a lot of um, uncertainty. And while there was uncertainty, I feel like what I'm really proud of is the entire staff just came together and said, what do you need? What do you need? So one of the first things I did that morning was asked that all of our lunch co coaches and our recess coaches come and stay all day. Can you come right away? Can you stay all day? Can you just be on hand to um, support a kid that needs help, help a family, um, get food to kids? So the two big goals I had that day was to make sure we distribute the food that we had to, to all the kids that needed it and to make sure that all kids went home with a stack of books. And anything we could do above and beyond that was going to be a bonus. Hmm. Um, I was surprised, but not surprised, that I probably only had 40% of our kids show up hmm. that day, um, which, which is understandable. I just didn't know, what, I had no idea what it would be like. Um, so then, Part of what we had to do was reach out to the families that weren't there that we know that we know needed food. Um, we have blessings in a backpack program, and and that was a Friday a week ago. And what we do on Fridays is put a bag of food in the lockers of kids that need it on Fridays that they take home for the weekend. And it's you know a weekend of breakfast, lunches, and dinners for that child to get them through the week or through the weekend, I should say. Um, and then when they come to school, they get their free lunch um, and their free breakfast. So we, one of the things we did as a district is we keep about a month supply of food for our Blessings in a Backpack program. So as soon as we got there, we pulled out all of the food that we had for distribution that day, then had maintenance come in and pick up our tubs, take it back to where we fill the food, and then they divided up all the remaining food sent it back to us so that we could give um, another three weekends worth of food to those kids. So we're sending them, um, kids that are a part of the program, a big thing of food. We emptied all of the milk that we have saved up for the lunch program. We laid that all out and had that bagged up, ready for families to take with them um, as well. Then our teachers, being that we didn't have as many kids there, they started sharing kids a little bit so that, you know, if my partner third grade teacher goes and works on taking kids to the book room, getting, getting their books, getting their logins available, making um, some fun things for them to do at school for a little bit, they'll watch the kids, then I'll take all the kids and my partner teacher will do it, do that as well. Meanwhile, I had the lunch coaches and the aides just going teacher to teacher, just seeing what can we do, how can we help. So it was all hands on deck, um, but it went smoother than I anticipated. And I had those lunch coaches and support staff there all day because as the day got further and further into the day, you start to see the anxiety present itself with the kids. You start to see the behaviors. You know, so we were ready. Like after lunch, I'm like, gear up because we're going to start to have kids falling apart at this point. And um, yeah. Yeah, having triage in the office for, for the kids that needed some stability and extra love and support. So um, I'm so proud of my team, all the adults there that just really pulled together and 
did what they needed to do and have been doing the same thing all week. So hmm. we've been off since Monday. Um, uh, since you know, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm good. Uh, I, I was just what I, I was just gonna just gonna say that how just incredibly impressed I am with 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 not just you but with everybody, right? Like I'm I'm getting yeah, emotional because you know this week. Look, I understand the toll that this week has taken on my two children, my six and my eight year old, and I'm talking about kids that have two parents that have been home with them all week and ha do not have to worry about where their next meal is going to come from, and I can't comprehend what the last day would be like as a teacher for, with, with my kids knowing what some of them are going home to you know and how do you manage that how do you do you talk to them about that do you how does that fit in talk to my staff about that is yeah that or mean? anybody like yeah. is that yeah. are they are you know how how, how like so are, are they feeling that or is it are, you know because that's what i would be feeling i would be like that my mindset would be man you know what what am i going to do now you know what basically how am i going right. to stay in touch with you? have had you planned for this at all like how do you plan for this <laughs> we were getting ready to plan for that so i feel like had we been in school last week those are some of the measures we were going to begin to take as a district but when we had the governor close the schools and it was the right thing to do um, I completely agree with it. This just came on so fast. I think we would have made a plan, but we didn't have one. You know, my teachers are looking at me like, what are our expectations? What are we supposed to do? And um, and I said, please do your best to to connect with the kids. And there, I have no expectations to give you, but I'm just going to ask you to do your best to connect with the kids. Um, I had a Zoom meeting with my teachers yesterday, which wasn't planned, it's just out of the blue, like feeling like I needed to connect to them. Are they okay? Are their families okay? I need to see their faces. And that was that was really nice. But you know, another thing we talked about in there, like there, there aren't any rule, we have no rules for this. We don't, we weren't, there's no rules laid out for this. If there's kids you're worried about, find their phone number and call them. It's okay to do that. Um, how are you reaching out to them? Some of them after our Zoom meeting that we had with each other, and that was my first time using Zoom, um, started setting up Zoom with their class. So I saw some invitations going out and I see some videos happening with teachers and their students. Um, I started on Monday doing an inter interactive read aloud with on my school's Facebook page so the kids can jump in and see me and see that I'm okay. Um, but you're right when you say we have some kids that I know I sent home to domestic violence, that I know I sent home to parents that aren't there, that I know I sent home mm. to a place where they have no food. And, and my teachers we're feeling the same thing as well. And we don't have answers for that. And I think one of the hardest things about this is, um, is just thinking about the equity and the accessibility, not just for learning, but for food and connection and feeling love and support. And, and I don't know how to solve that. Do most of your kids have internet? So, so your school, what percent, what, what's the demographics of your school? We are 65% of our of our families are disadvantaged. So they receive free lunch and they are struggling families. Um, recently, I heard a statistic like in our county, maybe 45% don't have regular access to the internet. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely an equity and accessibility problem there. And that was a big concern of mine on Monday and Tuesday. My concern today, though, is food. Are they eating? Like, are they getting love? Are they okay? Um, where I was worried Monday and Tuesday, are, are they going to have an opportunity to learn was my concern. Now I'm like, are they going to be okay? Are they going to be healthy? Are they going to eat? Um, that's the harder part. I'm proud of my district. So on Wednesdays now, we're giving... We have a drive up system, so no questions asked. Anybody that pulls up, they we have 
a bag of seven breakfasts and seven lunches that we are giving out on Wednesdays. So they pull up. Uh, I was there last Wednesday. A grandfather pulled up and he said, I have four grandkids. So we handed him 28 breakfasts and 28 lunches and have a good day and just right into the car window. So that's happening every Wednesday. Um, again, that's those are kids that have some accessibility that someone's going to get there to the high school to pick up the food. Like where I'm really worried about are those kids that I don't know if they're if they're getting the message. I don't know if they're um, they've got someone that get that can get them up to the school. It was sweet. I saw a kid come up on a bike and and just say, "Can I have food?" Like he didn't come with a grown up, but he rode his bike up there and gave him some bags of food. Good it's friend. sad. Oh, I I just can't imagine. I truly can't imagine going through this. So, so back going back, take me. So you leave that last day on that Friday. What is walking out of the building like for that last time? So it's weird. You know, I know you've been in my school, Brian. So you know the big lobby we have and the the stairs. So we dismissed school. All the kids had had left and standing there in front of the stairs and with my teachers and we're just all, I, I just remember this vividly. We're just all kind of standing there and nobody's really saying anything, but we're just kind of thinking like, well, now what, like what next? And um, I wanted to hug them, but it didn't feel okay to hug. And um, it just, it was like holding back the tears, like this feeling of uneasiness. At that point, I wasn't even, too afraid of the virus where I feel like I've learned more. I'm, I'm concerned about health of a lot of people in our, our nation, but I wasn't quite there yet a week ago. I didn't understand it quite as much. Like this happened so fast. Um, I've learned more now. And I, I guess my, cha my, my thinking changes almost daily. I talked to my superintendent, um, just tonight, and she said in the past week alone, she's had 20 guidances from the governor and 15 from MDE. So that's like five a day that are coming at our superintendents. So that's how fast these things are changing and, and yeah. how quickly information is coming at us that's different. I feel like I'm the same, you know, I feel like my my mentality and my attitude changes daily as well, not even daily, like sometimes hourly, you know, I told you before mm -hmm. we started that I had the best day of my week this week because I didn't go on my phone for the whole day. I literally gave my phone to my wife and I said, I don't want to see what's happening in the world because, you know, I'm just all I can focus on is the kids. That's it. Like I have a really hard time focusing on anything else on that, you know, we're protecting elderly people and sick people. Yeah. And I, and I'm for that. I'm a, but I have a hard time not immediately going to that kid who's being sent home to the domestic, domestic violence relationship. So I, you know, I have a really hard time with this whole thing because I, I feel like, you know, for me, it's, it's about, we're, we're picking the best of really crappy options. It's sort of like, there's, yeah. There's no options right now. And, you know, and I say this to teachers a lot, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with a kid in school, you have to pick the best of bad options, right? Sometimes the kid has their head down on the desk and you don't like that and you have to send them to the office or you can just let them keep their head down and, you know, try to try to talk to them as class goes on. And you're not happy with either option, but you pick the best of bad ones. And, you know, I, I never saw a scenario where we would have the, these two different kinds of options, right? Like saving kids from certain things or saving elderly and, and, and sick people from certain things. And, and I agree, like, I think closing schools was the right thing. I I've struggled with this though. I have to admit, like, I, you know, I've gone back and forth on this. I, I, I absolutely think it's, it's right to be closed. And, and I think it should be fluid on how they open based on what happens and, and the new data. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a, it's a scary thing that's going on. You know, my brother's on the front lines of this. He's a doctor. They have pulled all right. hands on deck. It is, it is, if you have an internal medicine degree, it doesn't matter what your specialty is. You are working COVID-19 and they have sent any patient home who isn't critical from the hospital because they're making room for, you know, patients. And I mean, it's, it's a, it's a scary thing. You know, it's a scary thing. And I, I've never been through it and you've never been through it. I mean, we're about the same age, right. and, you know, so in my lifetime and you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not a scared person. Like I don't live my life scared, but 
I've been nervous about this. I'm not trying to be overly nervous because I've done what they've told me to do since last Friday. I've quarantined basically with my family, but we go to the grocery store. I mean, we go, we, right. You go to certain places where there's people and it's, you know, even today, like my daughter, I watched her, you know, she, she, she was playing outside. She's touching her face. Like she just, she's a kid. She's six years old and it's, it's hard to not stop it. It's, you know, so how do you get kids in, into in, instruction and, you got the food part down. What are you guys doing for instruction? Have you done um, for that? We, like I said, um, our goal was to get books to every kid. But keep in mind, as I mentioned, only 40% of our kids showed up right. that last day. So we had 60% of our kids weren't there. So we started with, um, I had the district do a robocall just to all families in the district. Please come pick out come to school. We've got books ready for your child, um, some food ready if you need food. But if you could just come to school before 3.30 and pick up some stuff to take home with you during this closure. Um, some families took advantage of that and that was helpful. Um, learning wise, you know, one of the things that's been a blessing that um, I feel like we're really lucky that we did this. It wasn't for this purpose, but um, in in the fall when we kicked off our school year we wanted to take some actions to um, promote our school more positively and through our pb we flipped our pbis upside down and switched it to adult actions that we're going to take and one of those adult actions was that every teacher would come up with some sort of social communication platform um, everybody would do it that was tight but it was loose as far as which one you're gonna do, wherever you felt comfortable. So it might be Seesaw, it might be setting up a class Facebook page, it could be on Remind. Um, they could choose the plat platform, but our expectation was that they would send out two positive posts a week as a minimum with pictures. And um, the gold standard was to do something once a day. So we actually, Luckily, this year had a format in place because of our PBIS program where teachers already had a social communication set up with their family. So that's been a blessing. And as I get on social media, I'm seeing my teachers post things regularly. They're, um, they're showing videos. They are um, reading aloud on those things. They're sending um, examples on how to do math problems and also letting family know, families know that it's okay, do what you can. Um, I'm giving, I sent an email to my families today and on my social media, I've been saying to them, don't stress yourself out. It doesn't matter what you do, but what I do recommend is that you create a, some sort of routine and a schedule. And if you could just post that somewhere, I have it posted at a, on a whiteboard at my house. It doesn't matter what your schedule says, but have it and make sure it's visible because that gives certainty to kids during a time when things are, are not certain. Um, I, I recommend I'm that they put. I'm smiling because ours was a disaster. So ours, ours <laughs> lasted. Ours literally lasted like probably about 20 minutes of the first day. This week we, had <laughs> we had a schedule and you know, it was, it was, I mean, it was like brush your teeth. I didn't even get past brush your teeth like after, and it's just how it was for us. We're, we're not like, that. I'm not a, we, yep. it's just, you know, our thing is we've gone to, you know, my friend Lindsay Titus posted this the other night and I love it. It's, you know, we're not doing homeschooling, we're doing home learning. And whether yeah. it's I learn from you or you learn from me or whatever, whatever we learn, that's kind of what we're doing. And we're, you know, we're just kind of, but it's it's tough, man. There is nothing like this. I've never believed I've never been it through anything like this as a parent where all of a sudden I am thrust into full-time teacher, full-time parent, 24-7, you know. It, 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 Absolutely. I, Right. And so and, and I'm trained in this. And so if you're not, I mean, it is incredibly an incredibly challenging time, you know, for a lot of these parents. Absolutely. I, I just think they just need to survive. So, yeah. um, you know, one thing I recommended to families, too, like this is not easy. And it so there's documentaries and there's a lot of documentaries on Disney Plus or Netflix. Think of that as just an opportunity for kids to learn. Um, the other thing in my house, you know, 
my kids are lucky. They have a, a mom that's an educator and they're getting fed every day. And um, so iPads, they, they have iPads, they have All devices. Right. Um, you know what? Another thing that I've shared with others, too, is um, usually I'm a stickler about how much social media my kids are using and they use Snapchat um, and FaceTime and things like that. But I, I always limit it and monitor it where right now I'm like, by all means, talk to your friends, like get on that social media. Like right now, that's their only connection. At the beginning of the week, I was letting my kids have play dates as long as you wash your hands and we'll just have one person over at the time. On Wednesday, my thinking on that completely changed. And I'm like, nope, actually, you guys are staying home. You're not leaving the house. And when when we need food, mom or dad will go to the grocery store, but you guys aren't coming with us. Yeah. Um, so that flipped a lot. So now they're they're spending, they're making their own Zooms with their friends and they are FaceTiming and Snapchatting with friends. So um, I went from this much social media to now they've got this much, but that's how they're connecting yeah. with their friends. And that's so important. Thank God for it, right? Thank God for mm -hmm. it, for social media, for Zoom. You know, my son has been spending a ton of time on Seesaw. His teachers have been incredible. So my kid's district was ready. And I don't know how, I, I you know, I, 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 mm -hmm. I, but they were ready. I mean, they've been going since day one. Since day one, my, my kid has, has had assignments and they've had, you know, I think things since Wednesday. So they, Monday and Tuesday, they kind of sent out a prim, preliminary schedule saying, expect basically a, 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 a work from your te from from your teachers starting Wednesday and you know he had a report he had, that he did yesterday on Harriet Tubman and and everything's posted on seesaw his PE teachers doing this thing where you know you can record a video at home and post it mm -hmm. and it's really cool and the teachers are commenting and you know and he gets excited for that it's kind of like the highlight of the day now is looking at his iPad to see if his teachers commented and I'm I'm sad because I'm like, man, this kid, you're in second grade and you're supposed to be at school and you're supposed to be with your friends and you're supposed to be going to your show and your dance and your, your, you know, your plays and your proms. And for these kids, it's like, it hurts for me to watch this. And at the same time, you know, they don't complain, like they don't cry about it. They smile and they, and they, they do what they're told, you know, the kids are troopers it's, and it's, it's it's an incredible thing to see, but I'm so impressed overall with what I've seen from teachers during this. I mean, the level of compassion and caring and and willingness to kind of step outside. And, you know, I talk about that a lot in my workshops in general with going out of your way. And now we don't have a choice right now. Your your only choice of connection is going out of your way. And, you know, some people are used to doing that already because they do it on a daily basis. And other people are realizing this is literally now the only form of communication that I have. So what's what's next for you? Like what what happens next? I feel like it's just wait and see. Um, our closure was scheduled to go until April 13th, and we need to wait and see if we're back by April 13th. I'm worried that we won't be, and what will that mean next, and how much longer, and when we do come back, what will that look like? You know, we're we did just learn today that the state assessments have been canceled. So whenever we do go back, there won't be state assessments, which takes a huge pressure off, off of our plates. If we were to go back April 13th, or if we are to go back April 13th, um, that's the first day of Michigan state assessments. And it runs from then through the end of May. And we desperately need that time back to build our community again with our kids start like we do in September, kids are going to come back to us and they will have been through some trauma. I don't, all kids are going through trauma right now. This is, even if they seem okay, this is, they don't know what's going on completely. Just like you and I don't know what's going on completely. Like we're uh, learning things and changing our, our thinking hourly and daily. Like, can you imagine what that it's like for a no. five-year-old and a 10-year-old. I actually, no, I can't. And and sometimes I think it would almost be easier. Sometimes I wish yeah. I was six or, or 10 right now because I feel like being an adult in this world is an incredibly challenging thing for me to do. And I'm, you know, I, I've gotten to my, I don't usually get to my breaking point, you know, but I've, I've gotten there a couple times this week with the uncertainty and not knowing. And 
you know, I mean, I've gone, I feel like I've been through trauma. I feel like I feel mm -hmm. so tired right now, but I haven't slept, right? I don't sleep. I don't, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm going to get better and I'm getting better as it goes. But this has been a blind side for me. I went out to eat tonight, you know, and, and to support, trying to support a local restaurant, you know, you can't go out to eat, but I went to get food and you know, it's a, it's, it's a place we all, we go to all the time. And the, the manager, we know her well. And I walked in, she started thanking me for coming. She's like, thank you for coming because they're already talking about laying more people off. And, you know, and she starts telling me I have a seven year old or an eight year old son and I live with them and I'm a single mom. And I, you know, I have a one bedroom apartment and I pay 900 a month and my landlord's not letting, and she's just going on and on and on. And, you know, this is multiply that times how many, kids right are going through you know and so the yeah. mom is, or the dad is just super utterly stressed out and then of course that impacts on the kids you it's almost impossible yeah. to keep that from the kids so not only are they going to be missing school for this amount of time but i don't care if you if you're well off or not i don't care if you have money or not i don't care if you have food or not everybody's going through trauma right now. I truly believe that and you're going to deal mm -hmm. with all of that when you come back. And, you know, but that's the first step. The first step is coming back. And I know you and I right now talked about this a little bit before. I don't think anybody has even a, a, a they're not even a, a finish line. Like there, you can't, there's not even a spot where you're like, there's the finish line. Cool. At least we can see it. And for me, that's the most scary part of this whole thing is having absolutely no idea if and when this is going to end. I agree. Um, we started to talk about how watching the news, I'm seeing those numbers double. It went from 50 to 100 to 200. Today it was at 500. And I think of those images that I keep seeing on flattening the curve. And I get it. Like sometime this week, I that flattening the curve kind of clicked to me. And that's when I went from play dates with one pe one person washing your hands a lot to no play dates whatsoever we got to do our part to flatten this curve so i guess like i'm looking for when do those numbers start to plateau where i where we're yeah. starting to get a little bit flat and and maybe that will feel a little bit feel a little bit better but um well it will happen it will happen mm -hmm. at some point and nobody knows when you know i I feel the same. And I think the numbers are tremendously going up because just so many people, more people are becoming tested. I mean, people are just getting tested exactly. much more. The tests are becoming easier and the more, and we know, we know a, a ton of people have it. And hopefully, you know, hopefully most or a lot of them don't have the sickness because a lot of people get it and don't get, you don't even have any even symptoms from it. So at least that's what I think, right. but I don't even know. That's the truth. Like, I don't, what do I know? I don't even know <laughs> right. what, what to believe. You know, I, I, all I talk is from what I want, right? I want things to be back to normal. Like I want kids to go back to school. Like I want to come back to schools. You know, I'm, I'm worried about my own future. You know, when, when you guys all go mm -hmm. back to school, there's not room for professional development days. It's, it's all hands on deck, getting these kids all this information and this content that they lost. And I totally understand it's how it should be, you know, but it's, it's uncertain times for everybody out there. And that, I guess for me, that's kind of the one thing that I sort of take and I, and I smile at is that I, you know, everyone's kind of doing their part and going through it together. And, you know, and, and I think when you go through things with people, you can get through things and, you know, and going through hard things makes us stronger, I think in the long run, but there is nothing more painful than going through it in those moments. This is beyond my wildest dreams. I never thought that we'd be experiencing this. It is beyond my wildest dreams. I agree. I agree. I mean, there's, there's nothing that I, you know, I used to hear my wife and I were talking about this today. I used to hear those ads for like survival kits, like buy a survive, you know, on, on like, you know, so, and I would laugh, I'd be like, who would ever buy those? Like, why would anyone, or like, you'd laugh at the people who would stock up for the day that the world was ending, <laughs> you know? And now you're like, hey, my husband not. and I were talking <laughs> about that today yeah, too. You know how April <laughs> stocks up all the time, man, was she smart? <laughs> right. We were I almost mean, out of toilet paper. <laughs> It's it's unbelievable. It's uh, by the way, I went for toilet paper the other day, and of course there wasn't any, but there was tons of wet wipes. I don't understand that. Like wet wipes are way better than toilet paper anyway. Like why would anyone prefer toilet paper over wet wipes? Okay, wet wipes yeah, are... me too. I just spent fifty dollars on wet wet wipes because I couldn't get toilet paper, and I'm super excited about that. Oh, of course, they're way better. I can't <laughs> even believe anyone would ever pick toilet paper over wet wipes. <laughs> so. 
So that's that. Any any last b- nuggets? Anything you want to talk about? Anything that you're you you want to uh, say? Uh, gosh, you know, I don't know. I guess that. I guess what I want to say is what I've learned in this past week is to take a big breath and let go a little bit. Like we started very learning at home focused and that has kind of gone by the wayside a little bit. I think it gives kids a little stability, but I've learned this week that what is most important is that we hunker down we remember to control the things that we can control and not worry about some of the other things. You know, you know, I've talked to some of my staff and big questions out there, you know, yesterday we didn't know about state testing. So what will happen with that? What happens, you know, do we have to make up these days? Um, what if we don't get back before the end of this school year? Like all these uncertain things and, Today, I'm just kind of like, we just have to see how this plays out. And there's things that we can control and things that we can't. And right now, I can control being at home with my kids, making some good decisions to do my part to flatten this curve and let everything else go the way it's supposed to and roll with it. I I check in and just check in, check in with my grandma, check in with my mom, call all these people, check in on my families. Um, I ended my email to my families today and I just said, if you are in trouble, please let me know so that I can try to help you. And I think that's, I think it's time to not worry about the academic loss right now, but who's in trouble and what can we do? It's all about human beings right now. It's all mm-hmm. it's all about everything that that you talk about always anyway, right? It's it really yeah. hasn't changed from that, but now it's now it is. And you know, I think it's just so, such a hard thing. Like I look at my dad, you know, my dad is in his low 70s, but he don't care. Like you can't tell him what to do. He's not going to live his life in a bubble. He he's already said it. He's like I'm going to hug. I don't care if my my granddaughter has a cold. I'm hugging her. I, I I'm going to go out if I got to go out. I'm going out loving on my family and that's his mindset. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I'm just saying, you know, I, and so you kind of look at that and you, you know, you, you, I smile actually too at that because I'm like, you know what, that's probably how I'll, I'll probably feel like I'll be the same way at some point in my life where I'm like, you know what, I made it this far, right? I made it this far in my life. I'm going to go out, you know, smiling. My dad just told the other day, he's like, I want to go on a cruise right now. He's like, I'm ready to go on a cruise. I mean, literally this is his mentality. I have no, he, he's, well, he keeps saying, he's like, I don't know how much longer I have left. He's, you know, his father died when he was young and, you know, my, my, we have heart disease in our family and my dad's like, I've made it to my low seventies. He goes, I feel like I'm living on borrowed time already. He's like, you ain't put me in bubble wrap. I'll tell you that. Like, I'm not, I'm not tiptoeing around this world. I, you know, I've lived through a lot of stuff, you know, and, and I, I, I admire, I got to tell you, I mm-hmm. admire that. Mentality. He's not like, he's not going out trying to go out of his way to, to hang out with people, but he's not scared. And I, I admire that. Yeah. I admire that that willingness to kind of say, you know what, this is my family and these are my people, and you know, I created them. I'm the reason they all exist, and it, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out the way I want potentially if I do. And I, you know, I, I commend that. And I I've said this a couple times. I've taken some flack for it. I don't like when they call the elderly vulnerable. That annoys me because I feel like they're not vulnerable. I feel like they're durable. I feel like they're badasses. I feel like they've lived through you know, so much in their lives. And Mm -hmm. I smile when I see that because of the level I respect, you know, I look at my grandparents and they started our family and they wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to take care of it. They wouldn't let me, they'd say, you know, you can't take care of me. Like go, you know, do your thing, live your life. And I, you know, but I feel like also at the same time, it's incredible to see the world coming together, you know, but it's tough. It's a double-edged sword. You know, there's, there's, the economy has come to a screeching halt and there's a lot of people that are struggling out there right now and, and hurting tremendously. And I feel for them. I feel for those people. And I, you know, and, 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 you know, I think it's important for all of us to, 
to, to try whatever we can do to support our local people to, you know, I, I already did okay. it with my clean, with my cleaning lady. Right. So I have a lady who cleans my house normally. And I, you know, she's she basically everyone's canceled her and she called me panicking. Are you going to cancel me? And I said, I'm not going to cancel you, but I want, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to pay you half. And then I'm, I'm going to repay you. I'm going to pay you the amount that I owe you. I'm going to keep tabs on it, but everything's down for people. It's just how it works right now. And she was so thankful. She's like, of course, thank you. And, you know, and, and I appreciate that. And I feel like, you know, in our lives, if we can do that, when things are safer, if we mm -hmm. can't afford certain things, just to keep the world moving, to keep people going and to, and to make people feel normal again. You know, I, I think that that's a critical thing that all of us can do. And, and I'm going to try to do the best I can along with whatever they tell me to do. If they tell me to, and they already have, you know, we, but I've, I've enjoyed the hunker down. I got to tell you today I did at the first four days I struggled. Today I enjoyed it because I embraced it and I decided that I'm just going to pretend it's May because normally I don't have hardly any work in May and and I love you know and I'm home and I I'm going to pretend it's May and I'm going to focus on my kids and you know take this time to to really just be there with them and 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 hopefully as parents we can all do that with our own children and even some of these parents that normally struggle with their kids I'm hoping that they can do the same thing because you know nobody's working right now like everybody's kind of you know in limbo and and you know we're all in the same place and I believe that we're all in this together and I believe that we could all get through it together and we will get through it we'll get through it stronger and better and when you go through stuff man there are you take a pounding sometimes and I I feel a pounding on the way I've already felt it for a little bit mm -hmm. and I think it's going to continue for a little while um I, but yeah, I think I think so too you know I think at the end of the day I think everything will be okay and and hopefully we'll get back to normal and listen i have the utmost respect for you i appreciate everything that you are doing and that your staff is doing for these kids and um you know keep me posted on on anything that's going on or anything that i could help with sound good i will thank you brian you guys take care it's good to see you i'll talk to you soon all right you too take care bye This conference will now be recorded. Okay, go, tell the whole story. Okay, so Brian, I gotta tell you a funny story about my grandma this week. So my mom's been out of town and my grandma's 99 and she lives on her own and she's a hoot. So I call her every day just to check in on her. So I call her, I think it was, it was Wednesday actually. And I'm like, that was when I decided, okay, kids gotta stay home. We gotta really limit what we're doing. I go out by myself when I have to go out. So I'm like, Grandma, what do you need? Can I bring something over to you? I'm going out. So I just need to go to the bank and I need to get money. Why do you need money, Grandma? Well, I need some money in my purse just in case I want to go shopping. Well, if you need something, Grandma, I will bring whatever you want over and you can pay me later. Like, you don't have to pay me now. You don't really need money in your purse. She goes, I need money in my purse in case I need to go shopping. I need to go to the bank. I'm like, all right, Grandma, I'll come pitch, pick you up. Can we go through the drive-thru? Nope, I don't go through the drive-thru. I go in the bank. I you sure have to go in the bank, Grandma? Yeah, we're going in the bank. All right, Grandma. So we get in the car, take her to the bank. She goes in. She does her baking. Grandma, do you need to go in anywhere? You've got money in your purse now. Do we need to buy anything? She said, no, I don't need anything. So go home, take her home. Next day, I call Grandma again. Grandma, how you doing? You need me to bring anything? How you feeling? Are you feeling good yeah I'm feeling good and I went out and I got toilet paper my friend came and took me shopping and we wanted to like find toilet paper because I heard there was no toilet paper are you out of toilet paper grandma no but I just wanted to make sure I got some toilet paper because it's hard to get I could only find the really scratchy stuff but I got four rolls of toilet paper that I'm using for myself and saving the soft stuff for when I have friends over my like, grandma <laughs> you're not supposed to be going out or having friends over right now so oh okay <laughs> <laughs> she's just a just a who and I can't so I, she's so she's breaking every rule in the book which is which is which is exactly what's happening everywhere right this is what right. but that's, look the old people you are holding them back I don't I mean look you get to 99 years old you're I like oh, it, right? I lived through the holocaust I lived through hurricanes I lived exactly. through world wars <laughs> you think a virus is going to keep me from going to target you got to be out of your mind, <laughs> sort of like their mindset. <laughs> and I love it. I love that, that they're, that, that's their mindset. You know, it's, it's like, you guys are afraid for us. Like, and I, you know, I, it's a, it's a tough, 
it's a tough thing because you see that and you're kind of like, well, you know, cool, like, cool, you know, we, maybe we should just go about our life. I don't know. You know, they don't care why, right. we, you know, and I, I don't feel that way, but I don't know. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. It really truly is. So that's a great story. So what is she doing? Is she just chilling at home? She's chilling at home. She's, she can't drive herself anymore, but she stays home alone. Um, let's see. So Friday, today's Friday. So yesterday, no, it was today. It was today. I called her. How, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How are you doing today, grandma? I got cards with the neighbors. We're going to play cards. It's usually five of us, but two of us are sick. So three of us are playing cards. I'm like, all right, grandma. Like, I, I can't tell her what to do. If she wants me to take her to the bank, I gotta take her to the bank. Like, I can't. She's 99. I can't tell her what to do. She's 99. She's playing cards with her friends. That's it. Yes. Right. yes. Playing cards with our friends. We don't care. That's it. Good for 99 yep. years. Old. God bless her. Living on her own. That is unbelievable. Isn't that amazing? It really is. It really is. Good for her. Great story. Yeah. Great to wrap up on that. I appreciate everything that you're doing. It's so good to see you. You too, Brian. You guys take care over there in New York. I'll try.